Hi everyone, this is Cat Coloring. Welcome back to my channel for all subscribers, new as well as old. Well, today is finally the day of the long awaited episode of how to color. This time it's fur. So how to color fur. And one of my subscribers specifically asked me to uh, show how to color cat fur. So today it's going to be how to color cat fur. And I have looked in many of my coloring books and I have uh, chosen a few and I have dismissed other uh, drawings of cats because it's not that easy to color fur. For example, I have already dismissed Hannah Carlson's books. She has a lot of cats in her books, but she always draws the cats and the fur um, in a way that for me makes it a bit more difficult to color fur or to at least use it as a tutorial in how to color fur. So after much uh, detective work, I have chosen this coloring book Nightfall by Maria Trolle. And I have chosen this drawing of a cat. We also have a little mouse on top of the cat, but it's the cat that we want to uh, to draw. Uh, in, in many of these coloring books, these cats are covered with uh, flowers in the fur and so on. And this is a drawing where we have a cat sitting and you can see the front of the cat. You can see its body and we have its legs here, the back legs here and the front legs here. And we have the tail here. So first of all, when you color fur, because it's certainly not easy, and I have tried to color it before. If you watch some of my old videos uh, in the Maria Trolle playlist, I have colored uh, in four parts a drawing from, from it's actually from Hannah Carlson. The Tales from the Witch's Cottage is called Witch and Cat in Moonlight. And in one of the episodes, I think it's number three or two, I can't remember. I think it's number three, three where you can see me color the cat there and it's not that easy. So this one, the the pencil here, or you know, it's, it's a pen, but the drawing itself, it's quite simple. And when you want to color fur, it has to be quite simple because when you use your coloring pencil, the trick is to um, color with the coloring pencils to make it look like fur. And that's what we are going to do. So first of all, you are going to need a reference photo. And of course I have been online. And as you can see here, I have a reference photo. It's of a striped tabby cat. Just a quite normal cat. And this one is a bit um, brownish beige in uh, the colors. And uh, the most important part of this photo is that I can see where I need to lay my stripes and my shadows and my highlights on this photo. And that's what I'm going to be using this for. So a reference photo of some sorts. Okay, and then you are going to need sharp pencils. And I repeat, sharp pencils. And that's why I am going to be using my Polychromos pencils and not Prismacolor, because Prismacolors are very soft and they quite quickly lose their tip, the sharp tip. And then I would have to sharpen them over and over and then I would use the pencil up before I want to. So you have to have very, very sharp pencils. So you have to have pencils that you can sharpen to a very, very sharp tip. And as soon as it gets a little bit blunt, then you have to sharpen it again if you want to make the details in the fur. So a reference photo and sharpened pencils. And then you have to use a very, very light pressure. This is going to be a real uh, hard exercise for me because I do tend to have a little bit of a heavy hand sometimes and my light pressure is actually what some people would call <laughs> not a normal pressure, but uh, not a light, light pressure. So um, a light pressure. And one of the most important things, number four here, beside the 
reference photo, the sharpened pencils, and the light pressure is that you are going to try to not use the circular movements that we normally do when we color with coloring pencils, but you have to make lines and lines that go in the fur direction to make it realistic. And then we have to make lots and lots and lots of layers. Also a challenge for me because I don't usually do more than four layers most of the time. And I have a really big feeling that I'm going to be layering a lot, lot more with this fur. Um, polychromos is a very good choice, but otherwise, if you don't have polychromos uh, and the exact colors that I'm using, then use another coloring pencil, which you can uh, sharpen to a sharp point. Um, I have here the Stettler Design Journey. You can sharpen them to a sharp point. You could also try the Black Widows. They are not as soft as um, the Prismacolors and you can sharpen them to a very sharp point also. So uh, about the colors, I'm not quite sure that I want to do this a brown um, beige thing. Perhaps I will go with the gray colors. But anyway, we are going to have some dark colors uh, for the shadow areas, some mid tones for the fur and then some highlight colors, especially white to the light parts of this fur. And the light colors are going to be here around the nose and underneath the mouth and here on the beginning of the, the chest here and then further down the chest and then more dark colors here at the side uh, of the body and also here at the top of the head and we have also uh, the ears here. So, let's get started. Clip. Okay, so I have chosen my colors and as you can see here on the reference photo here, uh, I chose to go with the colors from this picture. This means that I'm going to be using brown colors and not gray colors. I know that a lot of tabby cats are grays, but I like brown as a color better. I will be using Polychromos pencils from Faber-Castell. It's an oil-based pencil and it has a lot of advantages. It can be sharpened to quite a sharp tip here. You can see I have sharpened all of my pencils and it's oil-based, not wax-based, and it's very pigmented in the color. So um, I think this will be a great um, choice actually for this drawing of the fur. I know that a lot of these uh, artists who um, specialize in animal portraits, they actually use Faber-Castell pencils in their colorings and drawings. So I will be using the black number 199, of course, for the dark parts. Um, but then I will also be using some dark brown colors and the dark brown colors will be walnut number 177 and um, Van Dyck Brown, number 176, and also Nuga, number 178. And I think that the Nuga is more for um, for this part of the body here and not so much here up in the, the face here of the cat and the ears. So it will be most Walnut Brown and Van Dyck Brown up here. But there are also, if we can see here on the photo, um, you can see here that there are also a lot of light places or spots here in, um, in the fur. So we have dark up here and then we have light sort of lines between the darker uh, spaces of fur here. And in these places I will be using some lighter browns with a more golden tone. So the darkest of these colors will be the Beaster 179 and the brown ochre 182 and the light yellow ochre 183. Um, as you can see I have chosen the colors in, in pairs of three. So a dark color, a mid-tone and a light color both with the darker browns and the lighter browns. Then we have the ears and we have the nose area, nose and mouth here. 
and here I will be using as uh, the lightest color beige red 132 in older sets of polychromas it's called light flesh but in my set it's called beige red so it's the same color the mid-tone will be cinnamon 189 and the darkest color venetian red 190 and it's not because i'm blind but the light falls into this gold writing so it's actually quite difficult to see what it is the eyes uh, are sort of a green so i have chosen earth green number 172 uh, alongside with the black of course and i want also some you know here around the nose and the chest here we have some uh, really light colors so i will also be using um the ivory 103 and then i will be using the white from Carandash luminance here number one that is and that's because this is a wax based pencil and it's um it works. I know that a lot of, uh, of these uh, portrait animal colorists and artists, they actually use the luminance uh, pencils to sort of blend uh, oil-based pencils in. So um, it should be working just fine. Okay, so let's get started this time for real. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is remember to keep a light pressure and uh, then it's a matter of sort of uh, blocking the dark areas in and light light pressure i mean this is going to be i'm just going to have this line from up because there's always you know these lines here with tabby cats we have these sort of uh, stripes in their fur and we also remember that we have to follow the fur direction. Oh, he's really tired. He snores like I don't know what. So I will just mark these with the black before I turn to the darker browns because these sort of lines are actually... Um, darker browns and then we also have a uh, darker line here oh my god he was really snoring today i hope that all of this snoring doesn't come on the recording but you will just have to excuse him He's a boxer, and boxers, they really snore. And alternate the direction of the fur. Uh, so here we have the ears. Um, okay, so you can see here that I have just marked and tried to do it lightly, because it's going to be... Um, dark brown these stripes here at the top of the head then there's usually a line here and over here and uh, remember that i am following the reference photo And as I said, I'm just marking here where I'm going to go in with the darker colors. Mm. Yeah. So this is actually quite meticulous, this work. And I can see here that where the whiskers are, we also have three rows of stripes and one way down here. So one up here 
and here and then a little one down here it's not that it's not as dark as the others and I can see here that um, I'm just using with a bit more pressure if you can say that the light pressure is sort of really really light like a whisper then you can say I'm just adding uh, sort of a bit more normal pressure here around the nose because cats are usually more dark around here and I might as well just do it now so that I won't forget it this means that I'm just drawing here around the nose with the black to um, and then we leave room for the nostrils here and then add a layer of black around this nose here and then I will ease the pressure again and just lay a very light layer of black here above the nose and here because it's going to be another color here and I also doing it here we have some brown color but here we have the very light tone so I will not dare to use any black here or I think it will be too dark and that is why this sort of stripe that we have here I only go about a um, well if you have the middle here about two-thirds in and not any further I also have to do it from this side and now I will also stop here I will just hint that we have a stripe down here um, we have this bow here so this um, ruins perhaps if you can say that not ruins but you know what I mean uh, because all otherwise we would have to continue the stripes here so I would have to um, work with the fact that we have this bow here and it covers for some of this neck and chest area on the cat but I can see down here that we're going to have a stripe here and it's a bit thicker than the stripes uh, and bigger than the stripe on stripes on the head so and it actually goes all the way down here and this is just before the chest hairs begin or you can see the stomach actually you have the underside of the cat if you know a cat you know that it has uh, lighter hairs from the chest sort of chest areas or just below the chest area and all the way down to um on the stomach area um and the hairs are also a bit longer here in this area so here and up here and then we have the short hairs here on the legs and on the sides um, looks quite wide down here this cat okay and also a bit longer hair here on the tail um, yeah I think that I might just also block this area here in the ears but I will do it very lightly because I'm going to go in with a, a more brown color so it will be very lightly And, and you know cats sort of have this um, I don't know how you call it in English some sort of a you have the ear and then sort of a little flip here um, so I'll just mark it here to show that uh, we do have it here sort of a two split earpiece whatever um, So I will just hint that I'm going to do something here with the ear. We will also have some very uh, some single hairs here, light. So we will have to be careful um, when we color the ears. I 
I will just add one little layer of stripe here. Okay, so um, I will also just here around this bit hint that way it's going to be darker here. Um, and then I will have to go in with um, we have to have a very white sort of I don't know outline here of um, the rest of uh, the the bottom of the face the ch not cheek the chin the chin down here okay um, it's also going to be a stripe up here So you can see it really takes a long, long time, this blocking. Mm. And of course, some of the body down here is hidden by all of these flowers and leaves but we will just have to do it as well as it can be done so we are going to um add some stripes here on its front legs here. And uh, please remember that I am using a reference photo and that is why And these stripes down here are more clear, so I will add a lot more pressure here than up uh, in the face. Um. Okay. I think that we will just hint. It's not very clear, but I think that we will just hint that we have another stripe here. And then we have the paws. And um, it's a bit darker here between, so I will just take the black with the normal pressure and just, you know, enhance these and uh, if we have to be really correct we will have to um, hint this the claws so and then we have the tail. We have the oh. tail. Oh, I almost forgot the tail. And the tail is usually quite dark, so I will not take a light pressure, but a more normal pressure, sort of a, in between between a light pressure and a normal pressure here, at the tip of the tail because the tip is usually quite dark, and then it usually continues to be quite dark in its stripes here. with a bit longer hair. And down here it's uh, actually quite difficult. Uh, so I think that we will just
color this one uh, dark because we have the flowers here to sort of cover from the tail so I think that we will just say that this bit of the tail is quite dark okay well so that was the first part the blocking in of the stripes um, with the black one okay so um now it's time for the dark brown colors and i will start with the darkest one the walnut brown and here i will color on top of um of the black and I will add a bit more And so for this video not to get too long, I think that I will just show you, for example, in the face, and then I will just color the rest or else, I mean, this is not going to take 50 or 60 hours, but it is going to take uh, some time to do this. You can see here that now I have added the walnut brown. I can, can already see the difference here and um, the sort of the nose going up here towards the head, it's this area is also darker. So I will take the walnut brown and add some color here and all the way to the top. and also here around the eyes because it's darker here just a little bit here around the nose can see it's really you have to be very meticulous here when you color fur of course this is also a very time consuming uh, this layering method so I will make another episode of how to color fur uh, in the very near future I also have to do some uh, how to color skin um, but I will do another one, how to color fur with uh, perhaps an easier way to color. And it will not be a cat, it will be a um, rabbit, I think. A little cute bunny. So, um, I will actually not do anything here because this is going to be more light colors here. I just wanted these to be because they are dark. Um, so the next color is uh, not uh, the Van Dyke Brown. 
and it's just a bit lighter. And I will just color a bit on top here and then I will add a little bit of this color here because if you look at the photo you can see that where the stripes aren't consume in here where the stripes aren't you have both dark and light hairs in this fur up here in the head and also around here. This means that um, perhaps I should have chosen a black cat because that, that would have been way easier uh, to just do black and some blue um, and some highlights. So now I uh, chose the difficult solution, but uh, that's how it is. So this means that I will have to uh, have some darker hair strands here in the fur um, also a bit here and also down here and now we have to be careful because as I said I think that I will just take the white um, and I will take the, yeah, and be careful with the luminance not to sharpen them too much because they will break. They're not as hard as um, the polychromas. It's a wax based pencil, so this cat is a bit more broad in the face than um, my reference photo. I don't think, uh, perhaps you can see it if I bring it up close here can see that I am adding some white and that is because I can see it from here because uh, the paper is not white in my Atollis books here. It has some sort of a yellow creamy tone to it. Not an awful lot, but enough so that you can see if you color with a white pencil that it turns into a different color than um, the one on the paper. So I will use the white here to mark this area as white and do a bit more white here around the chin because we are going to have some colors here but I want a base layer here of um, of the white. have to be careful not to hit any of the brown and take it into um, the white here. So now that this is done, I will take the nuka and it's a bit of a lighter color, do this. So just put some fur in here and it doesn't matter if it goes down and on top of the stripe because I am going to layer so that you can see it. So also a bit of nougat here. Um, I also think a bit of nougat up here. And I sort of alternate the direction of my tip so I won't have to sharpen it all the time. But So I will keep on getting some sharp sharpness in it. And here I will just, because remember the fur below the cheek, or not cheek, cheeks are here, the chin will get a bit longer. So I will just uh, 
because again, we don't have all the time in the world. I just want to show you that I we have some longer fur here on the chest. It's not easy to see, but imagine that the chest is here in this area and then the legs here. So I will also take my white. And remember, it's not quite white down here. It's actually a lot of colors. But just to remind myself that we are going to have some white here. I, I'm still using the nougat. We also usually have some fur going upwards here. Um, and then we will take, because I can't film it all. We will take, where will I put the lighter colors? So I will take the Beaster. And add some Beaster here. And up here. You can see I'm trying to. make these fur hairlines here. Um, I think that the beaster, we need to have it here also, under the eye. And a bit down here. And especially here. And then it's time for the more golden colors. And the golden colors are um, the brown ochre and the light yellow ochre. And I think that I want immediately to take this light yellow ochre because I have to... Um, oh, I have actually completely forgotten. That's embarrassing uh, to add some uh, brown here. That was uh, so my mistake. So I want the golden here because you can see on the photo again, light, light, light around the eyes. And also here by the ears. So we need a light sort of golden light color up here. And we need it here. And it goes a bit down here. Um, and it's also here where we have the whiskers. Oh, I also think I forgot the brown here. So I'm just adding some brown down here. But remember, I am doing a lot of layers. Just a hint of the golden color here around the eye. And a little bit here. You can see here, I go very lightly. I had it more pressure up here, but lightly down here. And that is because uh, we also need the brown ochre here. And also a bit here in the middle. And the brown over here. I hope that you can see now how I am. Um, 
still make room for the white, but try to get some other colored fur in here. We also actually have a little lightness next to this stripe down here. Uh, and a bit here in the middle. Um, and oh, I am actually thinking that I am. Um, could use some ivory. Oh, and that was too hard of a pressure. I just wanted to. But we have to have some color here. So now I will just take the nose. The nose is the Venetian red, and it's just going to be this color. So just normal pressure and color that little nose and then um, it's sort of colored in here so I think that I will use this um, cinnamon very lightly here because it's still very light in the color and there's also a lot of white so just to color the area here around the nose with the cinnamon and add a little bit of the beige red or light flesh if you have that color. So you can see here and then the white. So we sort of blend the white in and you can see here it is colored. And then you can just add a little layer again. And then add the white. So what about the ears? I will take the beige red or it's called light flesh if you have the old sets. And then color very lightly here in the ears and then I will take the cinnamon and here we don't have any fur so it's just normal coloring And of course, layering. Um, it's because I want both the dark color and a lighter color. And then I think that I will add the white with a gel pen, the light um, on top. I think that we are just going to have to use the walnut brown. to the shadows here in the ears. And the eyes, you have the pupil here, so I'm just going to take the earth green and color 
the rest of the eye. And I will color this one black and just add a black layer on top of the black here. And also here around the eye and then I will use the cinnamon to color this area completely and add a bit on the nose and then the brown ochre also here on top of the nose. Okay, so it's done. So what I did was I added uh, a number of layers, both here and down on the body and the tail, of course. I used the Carandash Full Blender because I think it's a very good blender. And I think that um, the colors uh, still really pop when you use this one. If you use the Derwent blender, they sort of get a bit pale, the colors. Um, and the Prisma color, well, I, I like it really much, but I don't think that it's very good to uh, blend the Polychromos colors. I think this full blender is a really, really good blender, so I use it for other coloring pencils and not just the Carandage Luminance. So, <coughs> sorry, after I had blended here, I added more layers and um, I also added details, uh, the black here, more black around the eyes and here. I added earth green, a lighter layer at the side of the eye here and a little bit of, um, I think it was the brown ochre here at the edges of the eye. Then I added more of this uh, cinnamon here. You can see here around the eyes. I think it could uh, use one more layer. Um, and um, down on the body, layers, layers, layers and blending. And then I took my white Posca this is the ultra fine Posca and you can see that the tip is really, really thin. Uh, so it's very good for, for details. So I added a little bit of the white here and then I just smushed it with my finger and let it dry. Then I used the ivory here to sort of um, blend it more out. Uh, not the white, but the ivory. And then I added again some white and again, removed some of it and blended it with the ivory. And then I added the final layer of a bit fur here so that you can see some of the hair strands or what you can call them here on the chest. I also used the Posca, of course, to um, enhance the white of the eyes. I used it for the whiskers, both here and cats have a lot of whiskers, not just three on each side and up here and then I added a bit on the um, hair here in the ears and then I scratched most of it off and added another layer and scratched most of it off so you can see that there is some white here but it's not as dominant as the white here with the whiskers. Finally I added some more white down here because if you remember from the photo oh I just have to find it here. Here. You can see the photo that it's really white. If we zoom in here. You can see here that it's really, really white, white, white here around the chin. Uh, so I thought that I would add just a little bit more of the white Posca here to enhance the white here 
because you can see um, with the ivory and the brown colors and the white, it's a bit difficult when you have so little space to keep the white just by using the pencils. Um, and then I added a little bit of shadow here around this uh, bow. I actually think that it's going to be black here and not just uh, walnut brown. So um, that was it, actually. Oh yeah, and then also just uh, colored here, uh, enhanced here around the mouth and here with the nose. So uh, that was it. That was how I would uh, color this tabby cat and its fur. You can see the reference photo here. And this is the result. If you want to see how to color chipmunks, I actually did it. Uh, I did it in December. I had a Christmas coloring challenge. And if you're new to my channel, and I have gotten a lot of new members here uh, during the winter in January, February, and now March, you probably haven't seen it. But uh, the Christmas coloring uh, challenge is a sort of Christmas uh, or Advent calendar I made throughout December from the 1st to the 25th of uh, December. And uh, I colored a little Christmas uh, drawing each day. Uh, this took me, I think, four or five days. Uh, and one of the days I actually colored this chipmunk, as you can see here. And that's also fur. I used uh, Prismacolors for this one. So if you want to see how you can color fur with Prismacolor pencils and uh, these chipmunks here, then you can go and watch that video. It's on a playlist on my channel. Yeah. So... This was how to color for a tabby cat. Episode. Right now, I want to thank you for watching this episode of the How to Color series. I hope that you enjoyed it. And I hope that you uh, learned some tricks uh, during this episode about how to color fur when you color tabby cats. Um, I hope that also that you will like this video. You are more than welcome to share it with other people you know on YouTube that perhaps don't know about me and my channel, please comment. Uh, please write in the comments if there's anything else you want me to show you how to color. Uh, other things than fur. <laughs> and uh, like and subscribe to my channel. It will really help it grow. With these words, look forward to the next episode of the How to Color. I will show you how to color light skin with different coloring pencil brands. So that was it for now. Have a nice day. Happy coloring. Bye.